Good morning. I got some makeup on to go to the hairdressers because there is nothing worse than sitting with wet hair, looking in that mirror and feeling horrendous. So I always make an effort when I go to the hairdresser. I thought I'd better do you a before. I know it looks nice now, doesn't it, Long? But um, that always happens just before you go to the hairdresser. What you've got suddenly looks nice anyway. I reckon I'm going to cut this much off. Easier to curl and do nice styles. Um, and get a bit of volume because uh, this has been up in a bun and looks lovely and voluminous. But within a few minutes, it'll be flat as a pancake like this. And it doesn't work. I don't know if you can tell, but one side significantly longer than the other. Because I just hacked some off myself when it started falling out. <laughs> And I'd cut it, I think, to here, so it's grown like that in a year. It does grow very quickly. It does grow very quickly. And then in a week and a half, I'll have some blonde put back in, because that's so dark. So dark. Oh, I'm wearing my Scarecrow vest, which got quite a few compliments. It's from Squid School, the Patreon channel. Channel? Patreon? I don't know what you call those things. Uh, I've made a few things from her, from Sydney, from Squid School. And um, this is a really nice one. It's got a nice texture. Fun point about this pattern. I started watching, based on your recommendations, to watch uh, All Creatures Great and Small, because I love the new remake of it. And uh, I did. I downloaded, I think, Britbox on Amazon. The Britbox. Watched all of it. I mean, if you like to have a lot of episodes to watch, oof, there is a lot to get through. And James Herriot, the main character, he has one of these, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same pattern. I think his is a khaki or an olive green, I think. Almost exactly the same. Uh, I made a few amendments to the pattern, only that I think everybody else knit the body to where this edge is and then did the ribbing and I felt like it gave me too much shoulder I'm already broad so I brought it in so this part actually was quite narrow before I added the two um ribbed edges because you add those after uh and everyone else's is quite wide like it looks instead of coming in it's like completely straight and I didn't want that masculine look, I wanted that little bit more daintiness. This is not a good angle for it, to be honest. Uh, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I started doing the, um, the neckline sooner. Whereas I think it calls to do it here. And I went a little bit sooner. Just because I felt like this little V-neck, quite short, looked a bit strange, so I wanted it a proper V. And I got that, I think I got that spot on. Yeah, so I'm super happy with that knitwear, and I've paired it with a recently made little blouse and um, high-waisted trousers with these button side detail. And... Um, I have worn this and worn this and worn this all autumn and now all winter. I love when an outfit comes together perfectly. So yeah, little brooch. Oh, and this is very satisfying. So it's leading into you. The way that these two edges go into the... Can you see that nice line? It goes and then it separates here and that one separates here. And then you've got your like little knit row in the middle. Don't you just love it when those little details come together? Didn't even know that was going to happen. I don't know if I did that just by accident or if that's part of the pattern. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Only thing I would say about this pattern um, and Squid School in general, fantastic stuff on there. Cannot, cannot complain. I... Uh, followed along with that because I wanted to learn a little bit more about knitting my own stuff and she shows you how to do a stitch pattern of whatever the project is 
and then she shows you how to work out your sizing based on how many um, stitches there are per inch and you have to do your measurements it, there was just a lot more calculating than I had anticipated I think I, I don't think I really understood what squid school meant doesn't mean that it was bad it's fantastic but um yeah it's not mindless knitting you have to be able to measure yourself in multiple places and then you're using your squat swatch and your measurements to create multiple different number and then they're all labeled a b c d e f and through, through the pattern it will tell you referring to a here referring to b here referring to c here and so it's a little bit like woohoo it really is a little bit at times if you're not concentrating would not have been a problem for me before but with there's this tiny human that lives in my house she's very irritating she's beautiful and she's very lovely but she is not conducive to knitting sometimes when you have to count um <laughs> uh, also one other thing about this is um i blocked it while it was on the needles when it, you knit from the bottom up to somewhere around here and then i blocked it i'm busy come back in a minute me? me i'm busy i'm on my podcast uh, so i knit from the bottom up to about here and then i blocked what i'd done and it grew and i know i could have worked out that measurement from my blocked swatch but i wanted to put it on and see what it looked like so where i thought it was going to come up too short by i don't know an inch or something it would then was perfect so that was good um and something went wrong at the end of knitting it oh yeah when i finished knitting it the distance from here to here was too long so i had a couple of options i could either pull out the ribbing and then pick up less stitches to just cinch it in or i could rip out a few rows at the top or Oh, there was something else I decided I could do. There was a few options. I've really thought through what could I do to fix this problem because it wasn't that bad in the back, but in the front it was like, like gaping. Go here, all the rib. I'm sure there was something else I thought I could do. Anyway, I did those two things. I pulled out like four rows maybe. Front, um, did I do front and back? Whatever. I pinned it on myself and did that and then i when i did the ribbing i just did a few less stitches particularly i pinned here and here and that was the area that's actually the area where if i was making a sewn garment i would often do a bust start so that kind of made sense to me to really yoink it in there with my with my rib oh other thing i could cast on here with uh, smaller needles I think I did less stitches. Anyway, those were the three kind of options. I love to have options because if one goes wrong, you'd always try another one. Anyway, I'm going to go to my appointment. I don't know what time it is. I'm talking to you for eight minutes. So I'm going to pop off and come back. And then I will be fabulous. Well, I'll be half fabulous because the colour's not done for another week and a half. But, you know, more fabulous than I am today. I'm back from the hairdressers and look how much they cut off okay do i hate it maybe but only because i always hate my hair straight from the hairdressers always there is something that happens that is just not good in the hairdressers and then as soon as i've washed it myself then i'm fine weird i don't know weird but there we are it's the right length and um it just feels much thicker and healthier because it was very very thin at the ends and where it's growing back is i think yeah it's here so there's only like all of my little bits are now almost to the end so it just feels a bit more fuller now it was the ends just felt really empty <laughs> anyway uh, in a week and a half it will be colored and then uh, that'll be good it's looking a bit like choppy at the moment and i'm not I'm not liking the choppiness <sighs> anyway uh i'm not going to do any crafting today except knitting on this scarf 
slight disaster i think i'm gonna run out of some colors so i'm gonna need to buy some we'll worry about that when it comes to it once i run out uh i still have a little bit to go before i think that happens one of the colors which one is i think that tanny color is the one that's almost gone um, but there's some more knitting to do before i get to that stripe so by that point i think i might also need some of the gray and maybe even some of the green so i'm just going to keep knitting until i get to a point where i'm nearly run out and i can see obviously i'm going to run out on that stripe and then i'll go the next day to go and buy wool i think there's i think abacan in town will have it and that will take me 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back with lila in pushing her in the buggy um they definitely have it whether or not they have that colour I don't know and then there's another knitting shop in town um, that's like more of an old fashioned like they sell a lot of acrylics I don't know if they sell this exact one I know that Abacan does sell Stylecraft and then there's one more but they sell fancy yarn they will not have this I don't even know if they sell any acrylic yeah. worst case scenario there's a shop called Ipakin. I think it's called Ipakin. And that's like a little drive, so Jason would have to take us there. We could go there. They they stock like every colour of the Starcraft in the DK and whatever the heavier one is. Is it Aaron? And like covered the walls from the floor to the ceiling in yarn and every colour. I mean, it's pretty glorious to see them all there. So I'm just going to keep on going. When I've run out of yarn, I will still have an entire evening's worth of work just weaving in the ends. So, yeah. And I also need to cut all the yarn for the tassels. So even, even if I can't knit on this project, I can still do those little bits for it. And I've got those two neck warmer things to do. So... I'm not going to be unproductive with my time. Yeah, I'm feeling very happy with this hair, with this length. It will curl beautifully. It will curl beautifully. That's why I get the shorter bits in the front. Looks a bit shaggy, doesn't it? Never mind. Because then I can, when I curl it, I can get that nice, like, curly around the face anyway it like goes like those vintagey waves and I like to like Ooh. something like you know what I mean yeah going to work soon hour and 15 minutes so I can do a couple of rows on this and maybe I'll have a Cadbury's pot of joy because it is very joyful I'm also working tomorrow morning and I'll probably work on this again tomorrow night and then on Monday morning I will be fresh and ready to go and get sewing that dress that I've cut the pattern for uh, the only thing I have left to do to the pattern I know the skirt works I know the top now works with the alterations I've done the only thing I've not done is check that they fit together rookie error so i just need to measure the waistline for the front and the back of both pieces and then um i just want to make sure that the side seam will match the side seam i don't want like a side seam of the bodice and then like to one side have the side seam of the skirt i want them to be matching so i might have to cut a bit off the bodice front and add it to the back for example or vice versa, <clears throat> or to the skirt, whichever way is um, easiest, just to make sure that they match. I think it's very important that the side seams do match. I mean, it would fit anyway. That's kind of a, that's an easy fix. That's the only thing that needs to be done with it. And I did lay out, the other day, I did lay out my pieces and I can get them so that there'll be a little bit of a V through the skirt. Not majorly veed, 
but so it's not straight and so I think they're going to be like maybe like this so rather than like very strong V it'll be a little bit of a sloped V and I think that would be quite elegant and then I have to think about pockets I do love a pocket but they would have to be quite a large pocket I think because of the thickness of the wool you wouldn't want a small one so I'll, I'll have a think about pockets I love a patch pocket just don't know which ones to do sometimes pockets on a thick fabric like that aren't going to be super flattering so we'll see the pattern for the skirt's got these fabulous kind of rounded pockets that you put bows on the top so that's always a good option i could do just a random square or rectangle i could do one that's got like a flapped over piece that's always an option what else could i do i'll cut them on the i can cut them maybe straight because if that's the skirt's cut kind of slightly bias I could cut the pockets straight so you'd get the the V and then you'd have the straight lines in contrast I quite like when you do that usually if it's cut if the garment's cut on the straight I cut the pocket on the bias so the pockets got the instead of being like this the pockets like that anyway rumble 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 let's do some knitting the new hair isn't there such a lovely feeling when you've had the ends cut off and it just runs through so nicely mm -hmm -hmm. so nicely Every year we get a Christmas card that is written to Mr. and Mrs. This person, this person got terrible handwriting. Okay, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I look forward to this card every year. All I love to you, to you all, Auntie Mog and Uncle Gay. Auntie Mog. Auntie Mog and Uncle I think it's actually Gary, but she has horrendous handwriting. Oh, but Auntie Mog. You're not my auntie, but for five years you've sent me Christmas cards and um, Auntie Mog, I love you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, your card is going to take pride of place on my mantle. I love it so much. I can't explain why. It just, it's very whimsical. So whimsical. Perfect. Oh, are you feeling festive now, Auntie Mog's been? Oh, good morning. We are today, Monday the 12th. Weekend was a little bit manic. Uh, I was working a lot and then last night I think I came back from work at three 
because it's two minutes away, so two minutes past three, and uh, fell asleep by six o'clock in the evening. <laughs> Bonkers. Anyway, I'm just working on my pattern for my dress. It needs to be cut out and then I can work on it, sewing it either today or just in bits throughout the rest of the week. The thing with Franken, Franken hacking, where you add bits from different patterns together, you have to make sure those bits then fit. So my back skirt and my back bodice fit together at the waistline perfectly uh, but the skirt does not so I'm just going to have a little look at what that difference is quickly and um, adjust either the skirt or the bodice to match um, but yeah but this is ready and I laid out my uh pieces yesterday just to check that i could get a kind of slight diagonal on the skirt and when did i lay out friday and i can get a little bit of a diagonal i can't get like a proper diagonal but i can get like a little bit and that's on my little drawing where i drew it i didn't draw like a full-on diagonal i drew on like quite a gentle one so i'm happy with that let me get that done and um, just check these. I don't know what I'm doing with my hair today, but um, it's quite short in the front now. And um, <laughs> I hate being uncomfortable when I'm uh, when I'm cutting on the floor. Cutting, I do not enjoy doing. I don't mind the pattern cutting, but cutting out fabric, I don't find that fun. I don't use this lovely big table because although it is lovely and big, it's just not quite big enough. And I like to use the whole of this room and lay it out along this entire middle and I can get everything pinned on. And then I can check that everything is spot on and I can fit everything. So that's good. All right, let's get going because we don't get much time. So we need to be on it. Also did pop to the shops today and bought loads of oranges. Now they're not quite the right oranges. Apparently there are some oranges that are right for jam and some are not and I bought the wrong kind because that's all there are and that's what I'm going to use because marmalade's going to be marmalade and I bought a grapefruit and some lemons to substitute a few of the oranges just to like get that little bit of sourness up in it because I'm going to use Seville oranges from Seville which are not eating oranges they are jam making oranges apparently anyway yeah let's get going myself ready to cut I've got all my pattern pieces ready to go. There's only four pieces. A front of the bodice, a back of the bodice, a front skirt and a back skirt. And the only piece cut on the fold is the bodice. There's no seam in the middle. All the rest have a seam. The skirt has a seam in the centre front and a centre back and side seams. Anyway, uh, I'm just putting my fabric it's on the floor. I'm just laying it out flat. Now, have a little look. I'm just trying to line up so that the upper and the lower parts are matching. Now, if you notice, this grey is quite close to the edge. If you notice on this side, it's a much further distance. So I'm just putting the grey square on the grey square. If I fold it back, you can see there's this much difference. So I just need to be careful when I'm laying my pattern pieces that... Um, I need to remember that that's the case and if I have laid these out correctly so you can see these are matching that line that's running through is matching there's a big black square here they're all matching and I've laid it all out and then I should have this should be the same all the way along I'm just trying to pay really good attention to make sure I've gone and checked each point that it's all right and then from there giving it a really good smooth out so i'm not i'm not looking for 100 percent perfect but i'm just looking for pretty good i mean i'm looking for 100 percent perfect but i'm not going to tell you that because then you'll be disappointed if it's not so just in case i'm not looking for perfect i'm just looking for good enough now my um my bodice is very small compared to the skirt. 
<coughs> so that goes on the fold. And there's the centre front fold. And there's my back. It's got a very generous um, centre back seam. I think I'll start off with my front piece. And I will get it cut. Oh wait, which one's wider? The skirt portion is wider on the front piece. So I will cut the front piece first. And once that is then cut out, I'll then see what I can do with the back to make it match its best. I don't think I'm going to try and match up the side seams. Oh, am I trying to match up side seams as well? Hmm. I don't know if you can match the... Hmm. Oh, let's, let's just... Let's just do our best. Let's just do our best. What more can we do? Uh, mm, okay, I'll come back to you when I've done something. I think I might just like mull over it for a good few minutes, just looking, just looking at it, you know, just having a general look. And then, and then inspiration of cutting will come to me magically um, from nowhere. Yeah, that, that's what we're hoping for, from nowhere. Yeah, If someone could make that happen, very grateful. I think we are getting somewhere to looking good. I'm going to make the skirt first and then I'm going to lay out my um, bodice and make sure there are no squares in the nipple region because um, you want them like slightly offset. Like, it, Let's say that there were squares that far apart. You'd want them like slightly offset or I don't know. You just don't want them in nipple position because it just draws. <laughs> draws the eye <laughs> but it's looking good let me show you come 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 <laughs> so i've just done the skirt so i'm watching a uh, the handmaid's tale which i have no business watching because it makes my brain um i cannot even describe what it does to my brain but it um not good but i'm invested now i've watched all those series so my center front seam is matched I've got a nice gentle V, not too, not too alarming, but not straight across. Can you see that comes really nicely to that middle point? Sorry, I've skewed it now. Um, I think that's all I've done. I've just popped it on there. Now, ooh, I'm going to try and match my side seams now. I've cut it and I hope that they match. So the side seams should match these grey stripes and then that will come into another V in the centre back the same as the centre front that is the idea it's actually much fuller than I thought I was going to manage but I like that and it is very drapey and the weight is giving it a nice swish so I am happy I'm very happy so far let's see how it um Continues on. I just finished the skirt. I mean, there's no overlocking done yet, but the front seam's done. The side seams. Let's get a bit more light. There we are, side seams. Not 100%, but you can, you can see these main parts are going through. And more or less, there is a grey stripe which runs through the middle, but it's a little bit uneven. Um, but I don't mind that. And then the back, also matched up. Brilliant. Um, it's a little bit messy just at the top here because my mannequin is smaller than me. That's all. <laughs> so she's a bit, she's a bit um, crossed over, but that's all. I'm laying out my bodice now. Um, kind of don't really know 
what I'm doing. If I look at the front middle, I've got a black square and then the two wider, it's cut on a different grain so it's not going to match up with these but um, I don't know if I line it up with here I'm getting a black middle followed by a grey line I think that kind of looks nice I suppose I've just I went around the pattern with some pins to see and then I folded the pattern over so that gives me like a, an idea of that piece and then the bus point is I can't see if I'm putting I can't see I just don't know if something is under there that shouldn't be I don't think so Do you know, I can never tell. It's easier when it's polka dots or flowers because you just don't put one there. Well, I don't know with a check. Does it matter? I don't know. I think I'm just going to cut this out. And then I've got that straight line runs through and the seam allowance will just cut that off, I think. So the line will go through here. And then you'll get a nice good stripes through that top portion and through the middle before the dark goes in and like disrupts this part. And then for the side seam I want to match up so that the upper part above the bust that one, whatever the stripe is, will match there and then not worry about whatever's happening below because that dart means that this won't match up. I think that's what I'm doing and then I'll cut the second half to match. I don't cut it on the fold. I, I cut one, like I'll, I'll cut that half and then I'll flap it over and I'll cut around the second piece of it if it's on the fold and on this one I'll cut the one I'll pick it up and place it over and then cut around it again that way I can kind of get a better check better pattern match come we Nina yeah you've been jumping on my fabric huh you've been jumping on it you've been jumping on it that's okay mummy doesn't mind good girl Good girl. Currently flat. God, look how bad my hair looks in those pigtails. <laughs> and the lighting is atrocious. Anyway, I'm flirting with the idea of doing my marmalade now. Mm. Five o'clock in the evening is not the time to be taking up new projects. I know that in my mind. And yet there is an irrational part of me that wants to be Someone who can do evening things without messing them up. Anyway, I'm hiding from Lila. I'm always hiding from Lila when I talk to you. I spend like the remainder of my life with her. <laughs> so I picked up my Radio Times. One year I got the TV guide by accident. Just lowered the whole tone of my Christmas. Keeping it nice and upper class with a Radio Times double issue. Just seeing what I want to read. All opens up on the King's Speech. 
King Charles III gives his first Christmas address. I feel like I might even watch it. I never watched the Queen's speech, but you know. It's a momentous occasion having a king. Not that I really care, to be honest. I know people really care. I'm afraid that I do not. Just, I have to just spend my time. This is a, this is a whole evening worth of activities. Just mulling through. What am I going to watch? Main one every year called Midwife. I don't know if I'm going to watch it at my uncle's. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Either way, I did watch it at their house one year, and they, uh, they all found it really depressing. <laughs> So, you know, maybe that's not the thing to watch. Ooh, Channel 5, My Fair Lady on Boxing Day in the morning. Mm. Love My Fair Lady. Wouldn't it be lovely? All I want is a room somewhere Far away from the cold night air <gasps> Ooh, Ghost of Christmas Past, Death in Paradise, The Commissioner. I love his stern little face. Oh, he's fabulous, isn't he? He always does that expression of, like, mildly irritated. He does it so well. <laughs> In real life, he's a really nice guy as well. <laughs> oh, Christmas Day. Look at all this good stuff. Oh, too many things. Oh, super worm. Lila will enjoy that. White Christmas, mm. Mm. The Snowman, 11.25, watch that one, that's nice. <clears throat> anyway, this is all part of the Christmas fun. I've got myself that hot chocolate, which I don't usually drink on screen. I take two, two big sips and then squirt it in my mouth like, like a hamster. Anyway, there we are, that's what I wanted. <clears throat> and Trixie's in it. She's back from Portofino. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's not cut off one of my favourites. Lucille. Also, some fabric arrived and I'll show you tomorrow because I can't show you anything else today with this horrendous lighting. Really is bad, isn't it? It's <clears throat> a bit better. Yeah, definitely still flirting with using that. Maybe it will be enough for me just to have looked um, at a video of Delia making it. Maybe that will satisfy my, my need and I can make notes on what I need to do uh, to make it. And tomorrow I need to make some cinnamon buns before work because on Wednesday I want to bring them in to the mums in the mum group. And uh, just really just show off. I mean, why else would I bring such an extravagant thing to a mum group rather than to show off, really? Show that I am actually a fabulous baking mum that also knits the, uh, the outfits for the baby and doesn't just scream really loudly during nursery rhymes, because I do. I do squawk really loudly. Actually, my mum was the same. We have this video footage of her that one of the... Um, one of my sister's friends gave her years ago. And all the other mums are dressed really casual and my mum is way overdressed for this kid's party and she's singing the hokey cokey, I think it is, in her Irish accent, like way too loud. The only person you can hear is my mum. <laughs> so having thought about it, clearly it runs the family. <laughs> that was actually made me chuckle, thinking that I've, uh, I've taken that from her. That uh, element of kind of silliness and um, childlike happiness, I suppose. I really enjoy singing the nursery rhymes. I love wind the bobbin up, you know, with the sewing. And Lila does it with her little fingers. Wind the bobbin up. So adorable. Anyway, I'm going to go and see what Delia says about this marmalade. She's a right bossy one, this Delia, you know. She's not slapdash enough for me. I like a bit of slapdash. She's a bit too, um, 
It's a bit too particular. I don't think you can do preserves slapdash when it comes to marmalade, really. I'll go now.